Well, good morning to you all and welcome to our live stream for this Christ the King Sunday, which is the last Sunday in our church year and marks then the beginning next Sunday of a new church year with the first Sunday in Advent. It is already here and this week, of course, we celebrate Thanksgiving, probably unlike any other Thanksgiving we've uh, celebrated, but we hope you are safe and healthy at home. Um, we will have a special Thanksgiving half hour prayer service with some nice Thanksgiving music to share with you uh, this coming Wednesday before Thanksgiving Day. And uh, we have also a wonderful Advent planned uh, worship for you. So uh, let us begin today with our bulletin, which you can download. We'll put links in on this Facebook channel to our website. PeaceFirstLutheran.com, uh, uh, and we'll make sure that the bulletin is there to download and also uh, via Facebook link. So let us begin our worship this morning by singing one of our hymns celebrating Christ the King, hymn 842 in our Evangelical Lutheran worship, O Worship the King. Worship the King, all glories above. O oh, gratefully sing God's power and love. Our shield and defender, the Ancient of Days, pavilioned in splendor and girded with praise. The earth with its store of wonders unfold. Almighty, your power has founded of old, established it fast by a changeless decree, and round it has cast like a mantle the sea. Your bountiful care what tongue can recite? It breathes in the air, it shines in the light. It streams from the hills, it descends to the plain, and sweetly distills in the dew and the rain. Frail children of dust, and feeble as fail, in you do we trust, nor find you to fail. Your mercies, how tender, how firm to the end, our maker, defender, redeemer, and friend. O oh, measureless might, ineffable love, foul angels delight to him you above. The humble creation, O oh, feeble their days, with true adoration shall sing of your praise. I greet you with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to serve the world you have made through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, we take a moment now, and uh, I invite the uh, children 
to uh, you know, come forward wherever you are and your TV uh, sets or your computer screens or tablet screens. And I wanted to talk with you a little bit about uh, the lesson for today, uh, our gospel lesson, where Jesus um, encourages us to, if you will, the theme of this service is if, to pay it forward. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, I have here for you a uh, card. You know, uh, when people give you a gift, right, or when they do something kind for you, I'm sure, you know, you probably have had people say, hey, why don't you send a thank you? It's always nice. It's polite. Send a thank you card. And so we have a thank you card like this. And if you open it up, right, there's lots of thank you, thank you, thank yous there and a nice space here to write a nice uh, message, a note to the person you want to thank. But, you know, um, you probably, your parents or your loved ones, maybe even your friends, have said, you know, even better than a thank you card, though, is, you know, if someone invites you over for like a sleepover or for a party, it's nice to do the same thing, right? To invite them to your birthday party or to a special event that, you know, you're planning. It's nice to uh, return the thank you, return the favor, if you will. And that's what Jesus is going to say to us today. It's great to pray and to give thanks to God and give thanks to Jesus for God's love for us. But it's even better, Jesus says, if you pay it forward, if you go out and invite your friends, and even better than that, not just your friends, but if you see someone who has a need, who's hungry or thirsty, who maybe doesn't have a roof over their whole, uh, head or a um, clothes to wear, right? That we find ways to give to them. And by giving to them, we say, thank you to God. Thank you to Jesus. And that's the best way to show our thanks, Jesus will tell us today in the gospel. So that uh, uh, instead of uh, living thank yous, we... Um, I like to say, we thank living. We live lives of thanksgiving. So as we prepare for our Thanksgiving celebration this week, and all that great food and uh, the entertainment and the nice holiday traditions that maybe your family has already started, the decorations, we think that we want to also remember others who maybe don't have it as good as us. And we want to show our thanks by giving back, by giving back to God, to our brothers and sisters, our fellow members in the human race, and live thanksgiving. Live it, this. Don't just eat it and talk about it. <laughs> of course, eating is probably going to live. Some of us are going to, you know, probably regret how much we've eaten, but... <coughs> But we're going to go out and we're going to remember that Thanksgiving is also about serving others and giving back. So there's a Thanksgiving card for you. Um, and uh, maybe you want to spend your Thanksgiving afternoon or as you're waiting for the turkey to bake or whatever you're going to eat, maybe you could write some Thanksgivings to your, uh, your family or your friends. Okay, let's have a prayer with one another. Dear Lord, we give you thanks, and we ask that you help us to live lives of thankfulness, that we celebrate thankful living. In Jesus' name, amen. Our reading today is from reading from Ephesians. I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks to you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the creator of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that in the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. 
What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us to believe according to the working of his great power? God put his power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things of the church, which is his body, the fulfillment of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us proclaim our gospel acclamation. Alleluia. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, Depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you. Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, grace and peace be unto you all from our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. And I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts and minds may be acceptable in the sight of God, who is our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Catherine Ryan Hyde's novel, entitled Pay It Forward, and the movie that was later based on the book, and also a young reader's edition was published in 2014, this book popular, popularized um, the title concept of doing three good deeds 
for others as a way of expressing appreciation and gratitude for a good deed that one has received. The idea of paying it forward, however, did not originate with Hyde. It was mentioned, albeit not by name, in a letter from, <clears throat> some of us think that old uh, curmudgeon Benjamin Franklin, to Benjamin Webb in a, the letter dated April the 22nd, 1784. And I quote, Benjamin Franklin writes, I do not pretend to give such a sum. I only lend it to you. When you meet with another honest person in similar distress, you must pay me by lending this sum to that person. Enjoin him to discharge the debt by a like operation when that person shall be able. I hope it may thus go through many hands before it meets with a knave who will stop its progress. This is a trick of mine for doing a great deal of good with a little money. Brothers and sisters, we find ourselves facing this last Sunday of the church year, Christ the King Sunday, and standing at the threshold of the holiday season and the new church year. This all begins this last week of November with our Thanksgiving celebration leading into next Sunday and the beginning of Advent, which will take us into the Christmas season. With the restrictions placed on gatherings this year, this will be a holiday season unlike most others for us. How will we embrace this season, these seasons, in our congregation. During a time when we are usually involved in gift giving, how will we pay it forward? How will we creatively find ways to pay forward the love of God in Jesus Christ for us and for all the world? Jesus inspired a similar way of life in those who came to believe in him. Nowhere is this principle more clearly expressed than in today's gospel. As one who went about doing good, Jesus healed the sick, fed the hungry, welcomed strangers, and reached out to those imprisoned by their own sins or through the injustice or apathy of others. No need was too small to merit his attention. No effort was too great. In all he said and did, Jesus revealed the loving care and the attentive mercy of God for this world's least ones. Members of my family, Jesus says. When Jesus' followers released, realized all the good gifts of God that had come into their lives through Christ, they were probably moved to thank and honor him as a sign of their gratitude. Some even wanted to make him king. But Jesus redirected their gratitude into gracious outreach toward others. Jesus challenged his own to pay it forward and to pass on to others what each had received from him. By extending God's gifts to others, believers become participants in a dynamic that makes of salvation a here and now experience for ourselves and for others, rather than relief that comes only with death. Salvation becomes an existential rather than merely an eternal experience. I'm mindful of uh, Dr. Martin Luther King's famous Christmas sermon of 1967 in which he said, it really boils down to this, that is, God's love coming down to us through Christ Jesus, this babe born in Bethlehem. It really comes down to this, that all life is interrelated. 
We are all caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied into a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. We may pray for the hungry, the thirsty, the sick, the imprisoned, the naked, the homeless, and the lost. But unless our prayer is translated into positive and practical action on their behalf, then we have obscured the reason for which Jesus lived and died and rose again. Jesus came to give so that we might give. He did not ask for payback. Rather, the words and works of Jesus compel those who profess to believe in him to pay it forward. To do so will be to honor Jesus as king in a most effective and reverent manner. To pay it forward is to proclaim our faith with our lips as well as with our lives. May that be so for us now. Amen. We sing with one another our hymn of the day, and it is our prayer to pay it forward. We sing in the Evangelical Lutheran Worship Hymn 685, Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, for thee. my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a might would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. Take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal. My love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet. Store, take myself, and I will be ever only all for thee. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Let us pray. Sovereign of all, train our ears to hear your cry in the needs of those around us. Bless all social ministries of the church through which we seek to serve others as we ourselves have been served. You cause rain to fall on the just and unjust alike. 
direct our use of creation to provide for the needs of all people in ways that are sustainable for the earth. Bring peace to every place where conflict rages. Grant opportunities for ending divisions among us and usher in your reign of unity and reconciliation. Heal the sinful divisions we erect between us and release us from systems of oppression and prejudice. Restore our capacity to see your image in those whose dignity we have stripped away. Pour out the gifts of your spirit on children and youth throughout the church. Be with the men and women who serve our nation in the military or civil service especially those from our community who are printed in our bulletin and those whom we bear in our hearts. Thank you for the saints now departed who feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and tended to the sick. Inspire us by their example that we may see your presence in those in need around us. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. We like to offer up thanksgiving for the bounty that has been uh, sent into our office uh, and uh, brought to the church the gifts uh, and our thanksgiving. And uh, it's really an honor to be able to say to our congregation and to those also who perhaps are not a part of us who have sent in uh, a gift, a tithe, an offering. And so we wish to pray over these offerings with this prayer now. God of all goodness, blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And I invite you, wherever you are, to uh, raise up your hand or give a greeting of peace to your loved ones, your family, well, uh, to the universe. And let us prepare our tables for the gift of God himself through the body and blood of Jesus Christ through our Holy Communion meal. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, by the witness of your saints, you show us the hope of our calling and strengthen us to run the race set before us that we may delight in your mercy and rejoice with them in glory. And so with all the saints, with the choirs of angels and all the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna Remember in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. 
This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we are bold to pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I invite you now, wherever you are, uh, if you're sitting at the table with loved ones or by yourself, to break off a piece of the bread that you have prepared or a wafer and extend it to your loved ones or to yourself with the words, the body of Christ given for you, given for me. And in the same way, I invite you to take your cup or whatever you have uh, prepared for yourself and to extend it to your loved ones or to yourself with the words, the blood of Christ shed for you, for me. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Receive this benediction. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessings of God's sovereign Savior and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 855 in the Evangelical Lutheran Worship Hymnal. Crown him with many crowns, and we will sing verses 1 and 2, and the last verse, number 5. <laughs>
Receive this dismissal. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.